Hello friends. Oh, I'm glad to see you tonight. I know that even though nobody's here just yet, I know you're coming and I'm eager to see you. I am outdoors in our backyard here. You see our hillside there? <laughs> and it has no plants on it yet except a few wild trees at the top of the hill, but that will all change in due course of time. We are slowly getting settled, things are getting unpacked, and, and today um, we finally were able to install the closet in my bedroom, Keith's closet and mine, and so now we have clothes hanging up. We have found, we haven't found all of our clothes yet, but we've found a lot of them. Ah, what, a, what a time, this is, this is quite an experience, but we're, in, we're enjoying settling in here in Knoxville and, and just, uh, what the Lord has in store. We've been having some great conversations with, with um, church members here and just really enjoying, enjoying this time uh, of starting to get acquainted with the folks here in Knoxville. So tonight um, we'll be studying Acts chapter 2. We'll be taking a look at that. And I just want to say at the very outset, if you have any, qu any comments or if you've got any prayer requests, feel free to put those on the comments and if there are a prayer requests that you have that perhaps you don't want to just um, share with the world <laughs> feel free to send me a private message I would be glad to be praying in fact a friend of mine uh, that was on last week um, she sent me a private message and we were praying and God answered her prayers I'm so thankful hey Lisa good to see you um, why I miss you. I hope things are going well for you there in Columbus. Well, as we begin, let's have a word of prayer and then we'll dig into our scripture passage for tonight. Thank you, Jesus, for your incredible love. Thank you that we can be here together, that we can pray, that we can share your word together. Lord, I thank you for the answers to prayer that you have already provided us this week. And Lord, I know that, that there are our friends that we've been praying for who are sick, uh, my friends who are, one is recovering from COVID, one is still in the midst of it. I pray that you would continue to be with him as he's still on ventilator. This is, he's been on for about 10 or 10 days or so. And I just pray that your spirit would be with him and give him healing and strength. Thank you, Father. We, you know all of our requests and I ask that you would just be with all of us now as we pray and as we spend time in your word. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, Andres, good to see you too. Ah, well, and, and I do want to say this. If you come on, just say, make a little comment, say hi or something, because then I can go back and I can see who is here and I can pray for you, and I do. All right, so tonight we're going to look at Acts chapter 4. And... Last week, when we looked at Acts chapter 3, we saw that Peter and John had gone to the temple for the evening prayer time, which was at 3 o'clock, the 3 o'clock prayer time, the evening prayers. Um, and there was a man begging at the gate there. And as he was holding out his hand to Peter and John for them to asking them to give him some money, they said, we don't have any money but what we have will give you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Get up and walk. And so immediately Peter took the man by the hand and the man stood up and started, it says, walking and leaping and praising God. Now they went into the temple um, as they were, as, as he was healed. Now I don't know how we would react if someone came walking and jumping up and down and just praising God at church. What would we do? What would we do if someone came in like that? I hope that if they had just experienced a miracle of healing, whether that was physical healing, spiritual healing, mental healing, whatever kind of healing God was giving them, that we would be walking and leaping and praising God with them. So as this man was healed, it caused it draw a lot of attention when he went walking and leaping into the temple courtyard um, this drew a lot of attention to him and to Peter and John and as we noticed 
Peter took advantage of this opportunity to preach Jesus. He, he immediately started talking to them about Jesus as their Messiah. And, and he was very, very straightforward. He said, Jesus is the one that your leaders put to death. And he says, but I realize that this was done in ignorance. Now we can say, how could they be ignorant? They had the Bible, they had Jesus, they had the disciples, they had the teachings of Jesus with them. They sh the miracles of Jesus, they should have known who he was. True. But you know, prejudice and our preconceived ideas are sometimes so strong that the best evidence in the world can't get past it. And so that's why Peter says, I realized that what your leaders did to Jesus was done in ignorance. And then he calls them to repentance. Well, this didn't go unnoticed. This sermon that Peter was giving here to the crowd. Hey, Miss Peggy, good to see you too. And you too, Miss Carol. And so as they were preaching and the man is standing there healed, the first time he's been that he's ever walked he was he was lame from birth if yes he was lame from birth this is the first time he'd ever walked he was thrilled and so as they're all standing there and peter and john are preaching the authorities hear about this the leaders of the temple hear about this and so they were very very upset that peter and john were preaching about jesus did they want people really talking and hearing a lot about Jesus during this time? No, because what had they done to Jesus just a few months before? Of course, they had put him to death and they did not want the name of Jesus preached. So they arrested Peter and John and put them in jail until the morning because it was already evening. But the next morning when the council, the high council convened, they called Peter and John to them and said, this is very interesting in John uh, Acts 4 verse 7, it says, they brought in the two disciples and demanded, by what power or in whose name have you done this? I don't know why they asked a question like that if they didn't want to hear the answer because they were just about to get, this was a wide open door for Peter and John to tell them exactly by whose power and whose name they had done this. Evidently, the man who had been healed was jailed with them, and they were all there, standing there together. And Peter, verse 8, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of our people, now he's being very respectful, but he's also being very straightforward. Are we being questioned today because we've done a good deed for a crippled man? Do you want to know how he was healed? Let me clearly state to all of you and all the people of Israel that he was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, the man you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. For Jesus is the one referred to in the scriptures where it says the stone that you builders rejected has now become the cornerstone and verse 12, the capstone of his argument here, there is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. Ah, oh, what a statement. These leaders opened the door wide, wide for Peter and John to preach the good news of Jesus to them. And they did not hesitate. They took full advantage of this opportunity. And it's interesting what is said next. Verse 13 says, The members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. For they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. They also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. Ah, oh, you know, and that's us, isn't it? I'm looking at the people who are here. Hey, Christine, Miss Peggy, Bammy, Mom, Mildred, good to see you. Oh my goodness. I look at our names, all of us who are here tonight, and I think we all fall into this category. None of us have special training in the scriptures. You know, we didn't go to seminary. I don't have a theological degree. How about you? God 
uses ordinary people. How? Is it because these ordinary people were so brilliant, they were so eloquent, they were so powerful? No, it was because of the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. They said very clearly, how was he healed? He says, I want to state clearly to all of you that he was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The man you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. What a miraculous thing is the name of Jesus. The name of the powerful name of Jesus. They had healed him in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And now they are clearly stating to the leaders of their people that the powerful name of Jesus brought healing and change to the life of a man who had been who had been lame from birth hey dad good to see you too thanks mom for telling me that dad says hi please give him a hug for me now this raised a question for the leaders of the people they wanted to know they were thinking what should we do with these people now what should we do with these men they have obviously performed a powerful miracle but and everyone in Jerusalem knows about it, but we can't allow them to continue to spread this propaganda about Jesus of Nazareth. So I think we'll just tell them they can't speak in the name of Jesus anymore. So they called the apostles back into the council chamber and told them that they were never again to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. There in verse 18. Well now, what do you think they responded to this? Absolutely. They said, verse 19, do you think that God wants us to obey you rather than him? We cannot stop telling about everything that we have seen and heard. Isn't that amazing? They said, we can only speak truth. We have to speak the name of Jesus. They had experienced the change in their lives as they had seen Jesus' ministry for three and a half years, as they saw the crucifixion, as they witnessed the risen Christ, as they saw him ascend up into heaven with a promise that he would return. They said, we've got to tell. We have to tell the truth. We have to tell what we have seen, what we have heard. We can't hold back. His name is too precious. We cannot hold back. Well, the council threatened them further, but they finally let them know because they didn't know how to punish them without starting a riot. Verse 21, for everyone was praising God for this miraculous sign, the healing of a man who had been lame for more than 40 years. At this point, in the rest of the chapter, you can read this, and you should, it's tremendous. At this point, the, they went back to, and joined with the other believers and started praising God together. They started praying in the name of Jesus. You know, the early disciples, their whole lives revolved around the name of Jesus. Everything they did was in the name of Jesus, was for Jesus' sake, was because they loved the name of Jesus. They loved Jesus. And his precious name was the only thing they could talk about, the only thing they could think about. And so they could not keep quiet. They had to speak the truth. They had to tell what they'd seen and heard, what they knew beyond all shadow of doubt. And then I want you to hear what happened. Verse 31, after they prayed together, Peter, John, and all of the believers, it wouldn't surprise me if that formerly lame man was there with them. It says, the meeting place shook and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. Wait a minute, I thought they'd already been filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh yes, but my friends, as we let the Holy Spirit work in us, there's room for more. And he can fill us again and again and again with more and more and more of his presence, more and more and more of his power, 
more and more and more of his peace and his love. And this is the experience of these men. In fact, it goes on to say that as they were filled with the Holy Spirit, it says they were united in mind and heart, and they felt that what they owned was not their own. So they shared everything they had. And the apostles testified powerfully to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and God's great blessing was upon them all. There were no needy people among them because those who owned land or houses would sell them and would bring the money to the apostles to give to those in need. What a remarkable thing that they would sell anything they had that they weren't using, that they didn't need themselves. They would sell it and give the proceeds to those other believers who were in need. So nobody was suffering. There were no hungry ones. For instance, there was Joseph, the one the apostles nicknamed Barnabas. Now we're going to be reading a lot about Barnabas the rest of, of Acts, which means the son of encouragement. He was from the tribe of Levi and came from the island of Cyprus. He sold a field and brought the money to the apostles. So next week we'll pick up and we'll be talking more about what Christian life looked like in the first century. But I hope that you are encouraged about the name of Jesus, that the powerful, precious, beautiful name of Jesus can work miracles in your life and work miracles in the lives of those around you. Well, it's starting to rain here, so I'm going to bring this to a close here. But if you do have prayer requests, I want to... Hey, Roxanne, good to see you. It's good to be with you every week too, Miss Peggy. I'm so glad you can be with, with us tonight. But let's have a word of prayer. And as I said, it's starting to sprinkle. I'll show you the, can you see the sky? Ah, it didn't like that. My phone didn't like it when I turned it sideways so that you could see the sky, but it's starting to sprinkle pretty good here. I'm gonna, gonna have a word of prayer and we'll close. But if you do have prayer requests, put them in the comment section and we'll pray, with them. We'll pray about those through the week. Loving Father, thank you for your grace. Thank you for the powerful, precious, beautiful name of Jesus that you do not leave us to live this Christian life on our own, but you fill us with your presence, the Holy Spirit, your name, your power. Lord Jesus, give us a love for you, a deep love for you, that will fill our hearts with a passion to know you, to spend time in your word, to, to love you more. We are yours, Father, save us, we pray in the name of Jesus, amen. All right, God bless you. I'm going to run inside before my Bible gets soaking wet. I love you. I'll see you next week. Take care now. Bye-bye.